Well, folks, you might think that the Pope is interested in eternal values. It turns out he really just doesn't like coal very much. And when it comes to the international left, not only is there no morality, there, there's no actual realism about the world. That's true on virtually every topic. When it comes to foreign policy, there's no realism because the assumption is that if the West simply goes hands off, the world will be a better place, which of course is a lie. And then when it comes to things like environmental policy, like the world has to be super hands on. We're going to get involved imperialistically with stopping developing nations from developing their own economies. And we're going to lecture them like a lot, a lot. So we're not going to focus on the things that actually make a person moral. Instead, we are going to, quote unquote, heal the earth by telling poor people that they're not allowed to use carbon-based fossil fuels, the most efficient fuels known to mankind. A, a perfect example of this sort of moral disconnect, unfortunately, is Pope Francis. So Pope Francis, I've been very critical of Pope Francis, of course. I don't have a particular dog in the Catholic fight, except that I believe the Catholic Church is strongest and best for Western civilization when it holds to some semblance of traditional values. So two stories from the Vatican over the course of the weekend. One, Pope Francis did take action against one of his biggest critics, according to The Blaze. This is the second time this month Pope Francis punished an American prelate. Pope Francis punished Cardinal Raymond Burke, 75-year-old canon lawyer from Wisconsin. He revoked Burke's salary and his subsidized Vatican apartment. He was living, like other cardinals in Rome, in his apartment for free. He received a monthly stipend of about 5000 bucks. He said that he was taking action against Burke because he was a source of disunity, according to an anon anonymous participant in a particular conversation on November 20th. Another unnamed source said Francis punished Burke because he was using his privileges against the church. Reports from earlier this week claimed that the Pope said of Burke during the meeting, quote, Cardinal Burke is my enemy, so I take away his apartment and his salary. Francis denies making those comments. I never use the word enemy or the pronoun my. I simply announced the fact of the meeting of the disastery heads without giving specific explanations. Burke has been very critical of Francis by saying you're focusing on like the environment and you don't seem to care at all about the crucial social issues that are dividing the church today. And in many cases, you're being soft on them. That happens to be right, by the way. The Pope has been unbelievably soft. What he does, he issues these sort of vague exclamations about, say, LGBTQ issues inside the church or say about female priests. He actually... He doesn't actually cave on them. He just makes really vague statements that seem to open the door. And then when I ask for clarification, he says, why, why, how dare you ask for clarification? I was perfectly clear. No, you weren't, or nobody would be asking the questions. That's happening on the one hand. And then on the other hand, you've got the Pope calling for the elimination of fossil fuels, which, by the way, for a church that is seeking new adherence in the poorest parts of the world, it turns out that you know what they actually need? Fossil fuels. I'm sorry to break it to the Pope and everybody else in the environmentalist corner. The single most efficient source of fuel on the planet remains fossil fuels. That's particularly true if you're looking at places like Africa, if you're looking at places like Asia, like South America. The development of many countries already burdened by grave economic... This is someone giving a statement for Pope Francis, obviously. He sent a statement to COP28. Instead, we should consider the footprint of a few nations responsible for a deeply troubling ecological the, uh, death towards many others. It would only be fair to find suitable means of remitting the financial debts that burden different peoples. Climate change signals the need for a political change. Let us emerge from the narrowness of self-interest and nationalism. These are approaches belonging to the past. Let us join in embracing an alternative vision. This will help to bring about an ecological conversion. Ecological conversion. I mean, it seems to me that they should uh, spend more time talking about spiritual conversion. I say this is a Jew, and they should be talking about e ecological conversion. But again, this is the new morality. The new morality is not based on anything remotely like social morality or church or family. It's based on all these other ancillary issues that build up a bizarre cult-like morality focused on, quote-unquote, saving the earth. With the college football playoff teams being announced yesterday, now would be the perfect time to join prize picks. Even if you don't follow college football, prize picks offers projections on pretty much every sport there is. We're talking NBA, MLB, NFL, NHL, PJ, like everything, whatever you are into. Prize picks is the easiest and fastest way to play daily fantasy sports. You pick two to six players. You choose whether they will score more or less than their prize picks projection. You can win up to 25 times your money on a single entry. You don't compete against other people. It's just you versus the projections. Plus, PrizePix has a reboot policy that keeps your entries in play, even if one of your players gets injured. For NFL games and college football top 25 matchups, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and doesn't return in the second, that player is rebooted. PrizePix is the only daily fantasy sports platform with injury insurance. Producer Jake, big football and basketball fan, PrizePix allows Jake to enjoy his weekends making entries on his favorite players. 
Jake loves that easy to use interface. You can do the same. Go to prizepicks.com slash Ben. Use promo code Ben for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash Ben. Promo code Ben for a deposit match up to $100. As a Daily Wire listener, you're not just informed, you're engaged. You value freedom and personal responsibility. This is why you need to check out MediShare. MediShare is a community-based approach to healthcare that lines up with the principles you believe in. Your values matter. With MediShare, your healthcare dollars won't be used for medical procedures that don't line up with your beliefs. MediShare is the highest rated healthcare sharing ministry with a 30-year proven track record. It's not health insurance. It's a community of 400,000 believers committed to caring and sharing with one another. Members save up to 50% or more on their monthly healthcare costs. Member satisfaction surveys show they like MediShare much more than health insurance. Why? Well, because it works. For a limited time, Daily Wire listeners will receive a $150 gift card when they join MediShare. To find out more, go to MediShare.com slash Ben. That's MediShare.com slash Ben. Terms and conditions do apply. Again, this is an amazing approach to healthcare that's going to make your life better. It's a community-based approach that lines up with principles you actually like as opposed to funding a bunch of stuff that you don't. Members save up to 50% or more on their monthly healthcare costs. Member satisfaction surveys, incredible. Go check them out right now. MediShare.com slash Ben. So the UAE climate chief, Sultan Al-Jaber, he, um, he said yesterday that the fossil fuel phase out, this thing that's being pushed by the entire international community, is like, this is really dumb and it's not going to work. He happens to be correct. Uh, we do not, I'm not in any way signing up to any discussion that is alarmist. I am here factual and I respect the science. And there is no science uh, out there or no scenario out there that says that the phase out of fossil fuel is what's going to achieve 1.5. 1.5 is my North Star. And a phase down and a phase out of fossil fuel, in my view, is inevitable. It is essential, but we need to be real, serious, and pragmatic about it. I'm well, sorry, I, really I do like not accept it. What I, see, um, I am not accepting this, I'm sorry. I am sorry, I respect you, and I do not accept any false accusations. I've been very clear about my position. This is wrong. And you're asking for a phase out of fossil fuel. Please help me, show me a roadmap for a phase out of fossil fuel that will allow, that will allow for socio, for sustainable socio-economic development. Unless you want to take the world back into caves. No. Show me. Okay, he is absolutely right about all that. That would be, of course, uh, the UAE. And, and he's totally right about all of that. But the West has this bizarre religious vision that if they magically say that fossil fuels should be phased out, then, then they will just disappear and everyone will retain their level of economic development. Or, sotto voce, they won't, right? Which is what the Sultan is saying there. He's like, well, uh, no, if you do this, then the economy is going to tank, which of course is true. Nonetheless, Biden climate envoy John Kerry, who went directly from failing in foreign policy to failing on climate change, uh, he is now calling for the death of all coal plants, which is a uh, good luck, dude. We'll be transitioning out of coal. There shouldn't be any more coal fired power plants permitted anywhere in the world. That's how you can do something for health. And the reality is that we're not doing it. So, um, you know, the measure here is is really uh, sounding the alarm bell. I find myself getting more and more militant because I do not understand how adults who are in position of responsibility can be avoiding responsibility for taking away those things that are killing people on a daily basis. He is so ridiculous. How ridiculous is John Kerry? Article from the Wall Street Journal, quote, wealthy nations are sending tens of billions of dollars to poorer ones for clean energy, the linchpin of a global strategy to cut greenhouse gas emissions in the developing world. But two of the most ambitious efforts yet in South Africa and Indonesia are now at risk of unraveling, sowing doubts about the rich world's ability to push developing countries away from coal and other fossil fuels. South Africa and Indonesia, among the world's most coal-hungry economies, are backtracking on commitments they made to burn less of the fuel under agreements known as the Just Energy Transition Partnerships, which offered them $28.5 billion from the United States and other wealthy nations. So they're just ignoring it, and then they're taking the money, and then they're still building their coal-fired power plants. So we're paying people to continue to do what they were doing in the first place. When, by the way, the only actual way that environmentalism has become a thing is through the wealth of the West. That is why. But again, the morality of the West is not tied up in reality. These days, it's tied up in absolute fantasy. Are you tired of the lies and the twist of the mainstream media talking points? Yeah, me too. Join me in my newest series, Fact, where I dismantle and bring truth to this tiring mainstream agenda. 